These are heaven in a bun. Hi, Bolt Bakers. You know by now that I love cinnamon rolls with the lovely cinnamon filling and the glaze on top. Have you ever thought about making a savory cinnamon roll? I know it sounds kind of crazy, but right now I'm going to show you how you can make a pepperoni pizza roll and they're absolutely delicious. So let's get baking. So before we get started, a lot of you know that I've partnered with Nature Box because I love their products. They make unique flavored snacks that are good for you and they taste great. And they're also free from artificial colors, flavors and sweeteners, which is what I love about them. Some of my favorite snacks are the whole wheat raspberry figgy bars. They are absolutely delicious and I take them hiking with me. They're individually wrapped, so they're really handy. Then we have spicy pub nuts. I really like these because they got a little bit of spice. I love toasted nuts. Then I have to throw in their crunchy barbecue twists. I really like these guys and I take them with me generally in the car for long car rides or even when I'm in the airport, I find them really handy. Mm, they taste so good. So here's the good news. Naturebox have offered My Bowl Bakers 50% off their first order. They deliver snacks straight to your door. And if you don't like one of your snacks, they will send you another one for free. All of this information can be found in the description box below this video. And unfortunately for right now, this offer is only available to United States and Canada. Okay, so that's that. Now let's get started on our dough. So to start out making our bread dough, I'm going to use my stand mixer. If you want to do it by hand, that's totally fine. You're just going to need a lot of elbow grease. Into my stand mixer, I'm going to add in my flour. Then next, I'm going to add in my dried yeast. Now you can use any kind of dried yeast that you have. And then I'm also going to add in some salt. You have to have salt in bread baking to bring out all those lovely flavors. Then I'm just going to go in with my spatula and stir these all together. Okay, lovely. Now for our wet ingredients. Here I have a jug of milk. Now what I'm going to do is add in some cubed butter into this and then I'm going to pop him into the microwave and heat him up until the butter melts and the milk is roughly around blood temperature. Okay, so my butter is melted and my milk is a little bit warm so this is perfect temperature to go into our dough. So all I'm going to do is turn on my machine to a low speed then pour in my liquid. So I get this question all the time and it's a really good one. People tell me that maybe their dough was too wet or too dry. So the thing about it is everyone's dough is going to be different because everybody uses different flours, different moisture, all sorts of stuff like that. So here's the deal. Don't add in all the liquid that I say. Add in the majority of it and then add it in bit by bit. So there you go. I just proved my own point. The dough is coming together. It's wiping the bottom of the bowl clean, but I have a tiny bit of milk left. So just easy does it. So now I'm going to turn the machine back onto medium speed and I'm going to let this knead the dough for roughly six to eight minutes. So as always, you know, the recipe for this can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com along with all of my other recipes. Okay, great. So it has been roughly around seven minutes. My dough is done. I can also tell when my dough is done because if you grab the dough, it comes out in one ball. And then as you can see, you've got a clean bowl. Clean bowl means a good dough. So now what I'm gonna do is take some flavorless oil or olive oil and then just spread it in the bowl and then just move your dough around so it gets coated in the olive oil. Perfect. So here I have some cling wrap. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that over the top of my dough. And then I'm gonna put over a nice clean towel. Now the reason that I do this is because yeast is a living thing. It likes to be warm and happy and fuzzy so it can grow and be beautiful. So you want to keep it nice and snug in there. Now I'm gonna set this aside at room temperature for roughly an hour and a half to two hours or until it doubles in size. Okay, so it's nice and warm in my kitchen here in Los Angeles. It's been two hours and just look at how big my dough has gotten. How beautiful is that? This is why I love bread making. It's a slow process. You have to be patient, but it's worth it all in the end. So you can see it's nice and bubbly. This is looking great. So now I'm just gonna turn him out onto my floured surface. Lovely. Then I'm gonna take my rolling pin and roll him roughly to around 24 inches by 12 inches. If you feel like your dough is sticking at all, take a little bit more flour, turn them over, and then just toss it on your surface. Don't be afraid about using too much flour. Lovely. This is gonna make a big pepperoni pizza roll. If you feel like your dough was pulling back a little bit, let it rest, walk away for 10, 15 minutes, then come back and roll it out again. This is looking fantastic. Okay. Now for the first layer, this is my secret ingredient. I have some pureed garlic here and I like to spread that all over the surface because I love really garlicky things. So you're gonna go everywhere. It's up to you. You don't like garlic so much, leave it out. I'm gonna put on loads, <laughs> whether Kevin likes it or not. 
Okay, so now the next layer is our sauce. You can use homemade or store-bought. I do have a recipe on biggerbolderbaking.com. It's really easy. You make it all up in a blender in five minutes, it's simple. So I have that and I'm gonna just smear this all over the surface of my dough. Now a rule of thumb here when doing something like this, leave a gap around an inch around the perimeter. You don't want to bring your sauce all the way to the edge. Just bring it roughly to the edge. So now the next layer is one of my favorites mozzarella cheese. So I have some shredded mozzarella here and I'm just going to very generously scatter it all over the top. I love cheese. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I love to add some dried herbs onto the top of mine. You can also add fresh basil, whatever you like. Scatter a few on top of there. I find that this is kind of the quintessential pizza shop tasting pizza. That's why I like to add them on top. Now because these are pepperoni rolls, I have here some chopped up pepperoni and I'm just going to scatter that all over the top too. Now, if you don't like pepperoni, leave it out. You can add in a different vegetable, whatever you like on your pizza, maybe even like pineapple and ham. That'd be lovely. Okay, lovely. So this is looking pretty good. It's a behemoth of a pizza roll. So now all I'm going to do is taking the long end, I'm going to very carefully roll up my dough. Just go all along. We're just doing it exact same like a cinnamon roll. Go ahead and roll him up. Perfect. And make sure he's nice and tight. Gorgeous. Now take your time doing this. You can go slow. Okay, and there is our giant pepperoni sausage. <laughs> so now we're going to cut it up into pieces. And what we're going to do is cut these pieces to roughly around two and a half to three inches. I did three inches because I like them nice and big. So just go ahead and carefully carve up your pieces. Now this recipe will make around nine pepperoni pizza rolls. You want to make more, cut them a little bit smaller. Look at that. You see when you turn them over, they look like real pizzas. Okie dokie, now I'm gonna take these guys and I'm gonna lay them onto my tray lined with parchment paper. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in between all of them, a few inches, because once they proof, they're gonna spread out. So we want to make sure they don't stick together. Now, our next step is that these guys need to proof again. They need to rise up, they need to grow a little bit. So I'm going to lay over some cling wrap over the pizza rolls. Now we're gonna leave these guys at room temperature to rise for roughly around 45 minutes to an hour, and then they're ready to be baked off. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes and look at those little rolls. You can tell they've kind of puffed up a little bit. They've gotten bigger. This is the perfect stage we want them at. Now I'm simply just gonna brush the rolls with a little bit of egg wash to make them golden brown and then pop them into the oven. Bake your rolls off at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for roughly 35 to 40 minutes or until golden brown. Check it out, our pizza rolls are out of the oven and they look insane. Do you see how big they got? And they're all standing by themselves. They're like their own individual pizza. You can see they're lovely golden brown on top. The cheese is all melted. And if you guys could smell my kitchen right now, you'd be as excited as I am. Now all the work that went into these pizza rolls is on the inside, so I'm gonna carve open one to show you what it looks like. Look at that, the tomato sauce, the melty cheese, I can smell the garlic, oh my gosh. These are heaven in a bun. This is a really fun recipe for a party or even a sleepover, and you can even take it with you in your lunchbox to school. You see, sometimes I taste some of the recipes and I know straight away I'm in trouble because this is absolutely delicious. It's got my name written all over it. I mean, tomato sauce, cheese, carbs. Oh, what could be wrong about this? Mmm, yummy. Thank you so much for watching. And make sure you head over to naturebox.com forward slash Gemma and get 50% off your snacks right now. You would be crazy not to. I'll see you back here really soon for more bigger, bolder baking.